Hey YouTube, it's Ariel here, arielphoenix.com and in today's video I'm going to be hopefully showing you Niche IQ which is Ezoic's SEO tool. It shows you on-page SEO, site improvement, topic suggestions, so keyword research. It's just a, a whole SEO tool in one. So you've got this in your dashboard, it's free, it's part of having Ezoic on your sites and it's right here and we're gonna go and explore it, but we can only, we're limited to how much we can explore it because it shows you my topics. I don't have any sites that I'm building in public, so it shows you my topics and I can't obviously talk about the quality of the keywords that it's giving me back because you can't see them. What I can do is explain how it works and how you can find topics for your niche and just a bit about the tool itself. So let's head straight into it. You do have to make sure if you have multiple sites on Ezoic, you do need to make sure that you select a specific site and you can go into it. What I will say is you want to have it, you want to go straight to settings if you've not used the tool before. You want to connect it to your Google search console so it can give you data-driven topics. So it's going to look at your site, it's going to grab the information that Google has, which is the most accurate information you can get about your site. And it's going to base your competitive analysis and your topics off of the data it has. That way you're not shooting in the dark, just throwing keywords out there seeing if you know seeing what your competitors are doing which I still recommend I mean I still recommend harvesting keywords that's the funnest thing to do for me but if you do want to find those easy wins and the things that are already you know linked to your site in some way you know topics that you know that you'll be able to rank for at least it, it gives you confidence that these topics are you're more likely to rank for these topics if you cover them properly then you do want to do this you want to connect to your search console and you want to find topics based on the data that your site already has. So as I said, it's got a few things in it. It's not just got the topics section. It's got the on-page SEO, which is Tag Tester. I don't know if it's still called Tag Tester, but that's the I've t I've spoken about Tag Tester many times where you you can you can change the, like your meta description or your your page description, and you can change your titles without changing them on your site. So it will show multiple versions, these, the, the description and the title, and it will give you a percentage of whether your site does better with this title or that title. And I love that tool because every time I get new pages going up in the SERPs, going like ranking in second, third, fourth position, I'm trying to do everything in my power to bring those up to position one. And, uh, and then this is where it comes into it because I now know what people are clicking on and why they're clicking on it. And it gives me an opportunity for them to click on mine over position one or two and so on and so forth. And I found that numbers work good in the title. So I just go straight into Tag Tester, try a few variations, add the date, lo and behold, those ones do better. And then I go back to my page and I change it completely. So I change it, don't update the URL. The URL stays the same, but I change the title. And if I'm doing the description, I change the description as well. But that's that's a whole different tool for a whole nother day. Likewise, Site Health is, it shows you any broken links that you've got on your page, anything returning errors if there are, if you're linking to pages that no longer exist and things like that, it shows you that. But again, we're just going to be focusing on topics. And I'm going to try and keep this short. Don't want to bore you with your inability to see my keywords. But here's what it says. It says identify competitors, keyword gap analysis. These are things that you usually do. Check keyword difficulty and rank opportunities. And then pick a topic and write about it. That's like a condensed version of what we do when we're finding keywords. And it's saying that it takes that off the table for you. And you just need to look at your list. Pick a topic and write about it. And that's not how I do things. I still want to take my list. I still want to make topic clusters. I still want to check the SERPs and stuff. But let's go over to it because it does, after it shows you the topic suggestion, it shows you, it, it gives you the opportunity to go straight over to the SERPs, the Google SERPs and the Bing SERPs. Let's move me out the way a bit. I'm going to try and do this quickly. One thing I found that it's lacking is the ability to click all or click multiple because this here is just bookmarking it so you know to come back to it for later or maybe it holds it there because it says um, they're refreshed weekly so because it's connected to your site when you're uploading new 
articles, it's drawing from that data and giving you new keywords. So that's pretty cool. But so as I said, you can bookmark them on the side, but you can't select all. You can't export to Google, Google Sheets and you can't download as a CSV. So hopefully that's something they're going to add in the near future because yeah, it's, it's all well and good. You can copy the keyword and, and take it and do something with it. But I like to have all my keywords on the sheet. I like to do like, as, as I said, topic clusters. I like to delve deeper and I wouldn't just take these keywords and start building content out without planning and really doing research on if it is, even though it says potential is high, search volume's high. I can't take that as gospel. I have to go and do more research, but I've marked the ones that I know I could, I could work on. The ones I've not marked, sometimes it's hit and miss. So these keywords at the top, which you can't see, are nothing to do with my niche at all. The ones I've marked as blue are, sorry, the ones I've booked, bookmarked are ones I can definitely go and make topic on and around. And then there are a few how-to ones at the bottom, which are loosely related to my niche. So I wouldn't cover these topics now, but when it gets to the point that I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna start building clusters around these topics. So it might make sense for me to bookmark these as well. Bookmark these now. But everything is very manual. It's, you know, you, you have to do everything individual. I need, I need the, the select all, I need the copy all, you know, I need all of those things that I'm used to, those creature comforts of keyword tools. But yeah, so over here it has, because all, because metrics on, on keyword tools, they can vary quite a bit. We've always got search volume, We've, most of the time we've got keyword difficulty, but this is measured quite differently. And then potential, I guess, could be linked to competition and keyword difficulty, but they've got a different, they've got tool tips for everything as you can see. So that takes the guesswork out of it. It says, oh, where am I going? It says potential value ranges between zero and 10 and reflects how valuable this topic could be to the domain, potential takes into account estimated topic traffic, relevance of the topic to the domain and keyword difficulty. The greater the potential, the more likely an article covering this topic will bring traffic to your domain. So, so nine or 10 being the best, but I'm not, I've not had any tens. So nine would be the next best. So it says, this article is both, oh, sorry, this keyword would be both easy enough for you to rank for and it has a decent amount of search volume to be worth your time. So it's it's not just so low competition and so low in search volume, it's showing you where you would start. So if you find something in these ranges and you're stuck for content, these would be the places that you start. So if I really wanna see some quick wins, I'd be looking to do these ones that I bookmarked and, and creating content around these ones first before going down the list and finding other opportunities. Keyword difficulty, again, we've, did I cover this one? It says keyword difficulty ranges between zero and 10 and five being ideal. So you don't wanna just go and sort that from one to 10. Five is ideal because it reflects how difficult it will be for your site to rank well in search results for this topic. A keyword difficulty of five is considered the ideal balance between how much traffic a topic can bring and how difficult it may be to rank well for it. Keyword difficulty is based on search volume, domain authority and domain relevance of the topic to the domain. And then on this in this column, it tells you if you've covered it, covered it on your site, but it is going by word for word. So let's say a keyword is Honda Civic. Um, that specifically, maybe you've covered something, something, something on, on the Civic. I don't think it's going to mark it and say you've covered it. So I'm not sure what they're basing covered off of, but I think based on what I've seen on my own results, I think it's it's going by the, the exact keyword. But if you do come across a keyword that you know you've covered a variation from, if it's something you can add into your content, then it's, it's the same thing as what I do with Google Search Console. I would just add that as if it's, it's probably gonna be a high impression keyword so you can add it into an existing article. If not, you can just go over here and tell it to hide the topic. If you don't want it, just hide it. But it, it doesn't make any sense going through all of that. There's like 700 keywords here. So it wouldn't make sense going through and, and, and hiding all of the ones that 
you don't want. It just makes us to pick out the ones that you do want and, and then take those and, and go and work with those. And then on these tabs, you've got competitors overview and competitors list. Got to blur a bunch of this out, of course. It shows you my competitors and I can confirm these are indeed my competitors. I have no chance of outranking the top two, but the third one, I'm coming for you. C competing domains which consistently rank better, which is interesting. So these aren't the same as my most, my, my domains with the most overlapping topics. These ones are going after a lot of my keywords, but they, they just rank better than me most of the time. And I would look to, I've not, I've not added these to my competitors list at all. So that's given me data straight away. I can go and put those on my competitors list and look at their content, look at how they're doing things and see where, see where I can fall in, see what I can do. So that's just an overview, but the comp competitors list shows you a huge list of your competition. And the overlap ratio, you can find a bunch of off sites. Look, if you, let me see, let's put it by 30 per page. Not all of these are competitors. Don't, don't get it twisted now. Not all of these are competitors, but you will find a lot of sites that you, you couldn't find just searching on Google because there were so many. But again, this eliminates you, your need for going and finding competitors on another keyword tool because it's all here. I think that's what they meant by cutting out X, Y, and Z. So not necessarily in the topic selection or the topic suggestion, but competitors list, it just shows you all of them. So you can go through and see if these are your competitors and, and you can check out their content and so on and so forth. But again, I said, even if I do find a competitor, if I, even if I do find a competitor on this list, I still need to put it into SEMrush or Ahrefs and, and get more information on the keywords they're ranking for. But yeah. But that's it guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. If you do wanna check out more information about Niche IQ, I'll put the link in the description. But again, if you're already on Ezoic, head over to your dashboard, check it out. You might find some topics to cover. They might be completely off, but if you connect your Google search console, it's gonna grab better data for you.